The Buffalo Bills and the Houston Texans agreed to a trade for star wide receiver Stephon Diggs. How will this move up impact and affect the Houston Texans 2024 NFL draft process? And now the Buffalo Bills need wide receiver prospects. We got all of that and more coming up next. You are locked on NFL draft, your daily podcast covering the NFL draft. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Locked On family? Welcome back to the Locked On NFL Draft Podcast, your daily podcast covering your favorite draft prospects. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your boy, Damian Parson, always on the ones and twos. You can find and follow me on X at DP underscore NFL. I'm a national scout and a senior draft analyst. And thank you for making Locked On NFL Draft your first listen today and every day. Shout out for being our everyday. And guys, you know, I got to kick this intro to my guy, Mr. LSU himself, Keith Sanchez. You can find and follow him on X at The Talent Code. Keep talking to him, baby. What's up, Locked On family? Let's get locked in. This is Keith Sanchez, 2019 national champ with those LSU Tigers, man. And the other side to this dynamic duel that we like to call the Locked On NFL Draft Podcast, where we bring you that championship level contest around the NFL Draft 24-7, 365 DP. We talk draft strategies. We talk draft prospects, right? We talk draft philosophies in DP. Now we're talking draft trades, right? Yes, yeah. The Buffalo Bills have traded Stephon Diggs to the Houston, Texas for a 2020. 25 second round pick so we're going to get into what does that mean for the buffalo bills what does that mean for the houston texans right how do the buffalo bills replace stefan diggs because hey and our mock draft we we've mocked wide receivers to the buffalo bills and that was with stefan diggs there so they may have to double dip at that position and then we're gonna wrap this thing up with a coach em up segment but dp before we get started with this show this action pack show that i'm excited to get started why don't you hit them with our title sponsor Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Guys, Steph on Diggs being traded to the Houston Texans. The Buffalo Bills, you know that they lost Gabe Davis uh, in free agency. He went to the Jacksonville Jaguars. So. The whole time, Keith, like you said, we've been mocking them another receiver because they've needed a wide receiver too. Now they need a wide receiver one and two because via the trade, you know, per I think it was Adam Schefter from ESPN, the Buffalo Bills receive a 2025 second round pick, which if I remember, if I remember correctly, that's the pick the Texans got from trading back with the Minnesota Vikings. So I don't even believe it's their original 2025 overall pick, 2025 second round pick. When you look at this trade, Keith, now C.J. Stroud coming off with offensive rookie of the year, an elite rookie season, right? Leading the team that was drafting second overall when he would when he was the second overall pick, leading them to the playoffs to now walk into 2024 with a healthy Tank Dell, Nico Collins, Dalton Schultz returning, Joe Mixon in the backfield, right? And now Stephon Diggs. How first of all, Keith, from a Houston Texans standpoint. They will be drafting somewhere in the second round. How does that impact their draft process and philosophy? Because they also brought in Danico Autry in the offseason and Daniel Hunter, the edge rusher from the Minnesota Vikings. So what do what can they do? This is literally best player available, right? Yeah, definitely. I, I think they're, they're in prime position and they're in prime position to pick up. Uh, the, to me, the best value in this draft, DP, is at the situation of in that 20-ish to, you know, top of the second round, middle of the second round. Mm -hmm. That's what a lot of these guys, and you know, we're starting to see these edge rushers fall, right? There's been a whole lot of mocks of, you know, the jab reverse, the lay two latus, right? Um, Potentially Chop Robinson. You know, it's just all of those edge rushers, and they can use somebody opposite side of Will Anderson, but then also... I mean, they want to go offensive line, right? It's really talented offensive line class. They can't go there. The cornerback position, right? Like, who knows where a guy like a Cooper DeJean, who we we pegged to be a, 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 a cover three type of guy or a safety corner hybrid, right? He can fit well in that scheme. Another high-level athlete with length that has ball skills. You put him opposite of Derek Stingley also. Now you have another situation. So the, the Houston Texans, we, we have to give them credit from uh, the perspective of this has been maybe one of the quickest turnarounds that we've seen from a roster management roster overhaul and they've done a good job by first drafting right and now they're getting aggressive with i talk about on this podcast is that once you've built your foundation 
You trade those draft picks away to go acquire high level proven talent already. There isn't, you, there isn't a, there may not be, I don't want to say there isn't, right? But that second round pick, what is the chances that that guy, that second round pick that you traded, right? Whatever guy you would have traded, he would have had the same impact as a Stefan Diggs on your team. It's probably not a very high chance, right? At That's all. I give it. Yeah, it, it, I give it 5%, right? If you if you truly look at it. So they did the right thing by making that move. And then now you have to talk about the Houston Texans, DP, as one of the best teams in the AFC. And that was, they made it to what? The divisional round last year, right? Mm -hmm. So now this is a team that's bumping their head against, hey, AFC championship. Y'all better look out because if CJ Stroud just repeats what he did last year, you're talking about a potential Super Bowl team. And, and Keith, like, when we talk about best player available for them, right? Like, Still yet, they're, like you said, corner, you know what I mean? Because yeah, you got Stingley, who was one of the best in the game last year. You know, man, if you watch this tape, you probably people. wouldn't be surprised by it. But, you know, whatever. Uh, he was healthy, and he showed out, right? We, we Jeff Okuda, uh, you know, coming over free, free agency from the Falcons and the Lions. And, and you know, they got Miles Bryant, who's, like, slotted to be their nickel. With Daniil Hunter and Will Anderson Jr. flanking the edges, that kind of takes, you know, if a Chop Robinson fell, we talked about him on yesterday's episode, right? Like, you know what I mean? If a Chop Robinson fell, Keith, why not? You know what I mean? Why wouldn't you jump at the the, the bit to bring him in and bring – because because I remember watching Daniil, like, for all the years he's been in Minnesota, he's reduced inside at times to kind of that four-eye, three-tech, from standing up or handing the dirt that he can rush or ahead of guards. Now you've got three – truly explosive rushes on the field at the same time, Keith. But I'm going to tell you, I'm going to bring some names up to you. Keith, and this is something that the NFL teams just can't let happen, right? After you've seen what the Houston Texans are doing right now, you can't let a Byron Murphy, a Johnny Newton fall to the second round. You that's, just can't. that's what I was going to say. I was going to go after those two names. And to be completely honest, I think one of those two guys will fall and be available. I just, I just don't know if the NFL – is prepared to draft two guys that sub 300, you know what I'm saying, and right around sub 6'1", right, right around that range. And so one of those guys are going to fall. And even grading those guys, I have a hard time figuring out which one is the better one, right, because they both do a lot of good things. I think I have Johnny Newton as my D-tackle one right now. But yeah. if, if, if Byron Murphy falls and he can do what he – did best at Texas, right, and just get upfield and be be disruptive. You pair him with that combination of the Neil Hunter and Will Anderson, and yeah, you still have a form of front that can be very dangerous. Keith, and, and, and you know, if if so, let's say both of those guys are gone, right, like whether one of them went before, right before them, whatever, you still have Braden Fix, Braden yeah, Fix from Florida yeah. State, Rook Ororo from Clemson. Keith, the, the, the interior defensive line spot is still available for them to add talent. But if they, like I said, they're not drafting to the second round. So let's say we see that run on corners where Kool-Aid, Nate Wiggins, Terry on Arnold, Quinion Mitchell, and let's say Cooper DeGene uh, still goes in round one, right? You look at, T, you know, you look at the different guys that will still be there. In his rake straw, um, you know what I mean? Kamari Lasseter, Mike Sandra still from Michigan, TJ Tampa. There'll still be plenty of corners on the board that where you're not drafting a CB1, you don't need one. You got one now. You have a guy that can travel, move into the slot, play both outside positions, and cover any type of cor any type of receiver. Explosive receiver, Derek Stingley can do it. A bigger body receiver, Derek Stingley can do it. It doesn't really matter because he's just that good and that transcendent of a talent, right? You saw it every day at practice against Chase, yes, against Jefferson, <laughs> you know, TMJ, like all those guys, he he faced a litany of different skill sets. But even, um, you know, and I know you interviewed him over when we were at the Senior Bowl, Kyrie Jackson, the big, tall, long corner from Oregon, Oregon who can yep. play, who's a good player himself and feels very underrated in this in this cornerback class. Keep this, the, the, the options for them, uh, for the Texans, and that with that first, that second round pick, their first pick in the 2024 NFL draft, I think they're they're pretty robust, in my opinion. Yeah, I I agree 100. percent But DP, it takes two to tangle, man. Listen, we talked about the Houston Texans side of it, but I'm pretty sure Bills Mafia right now. I'm gonna say they're in shambles, but it's a lot of question marks they're going on, right? <laughs> yeah, they're they're. I don't even know if they're in shock, DP, because I feel like this was something that we felt like was going to happen. We just talked about it with mock. We did a mock draft Tuesday, right? And I was like, hey. 
It seems like Stephon Diggs not happy. Y'all might want to draft a wide receiver, hopefully to make him happy, but he may not be there, right? That that we always talk, we always quote the Magic Johnson. The, I ain't gonna be there, right? Be there. I ain't gonna be here. So let's have this conversation, man, of what the Buffalo Bills should do, man, in this draft from draft perspective to keep themselves atop of the AFC East, right? With the Aaron Rodgers that's coming back, with the two attack of a low in the Miami Dolphins and Mike McDaniel that proved last year that we have a really good offense to win this division, right? So we're gonna have this really good conversation of what should the Buffalo Bills do as far as the wide receiver prospects to replace stuff on digs and he may have to double dip did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement you can still have an ira Robinhood has the only ira that gives you a three percent boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to robin hood gold but get this now through april 30th robin hood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fee fees apply. And now for some legal info. Claim as of quarter one, 2024, validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of the first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC is a registered broker dealer. Keith, you said it takes two to tango. To to see your I, I really want to know what Josh Allen's thinking. To watch your number one and number two wide receiver walk off, like to not be on the roster anymore. And headed not not just not being on the roster, but walking into the 2024 NFL draft without both of those guys, which puts more priority on that position. Where it's like, man, you know what? We could have drafted best player available at, truthfully, if you still had digs. You didn't have to go receive around one. Now you kind of have to, Keith. Yeah, I, I think so. And I'm, I'm obviously we, we're just getting this news right. So I'm trying to process all of this. And yeah, yeah. from from the Buffalo Bills perspective, you know, we're talking about team building. You're talking about roster management. You're talking about drafting. Right? What direction are you trying to go? Because they've been reluctant to almost draft. They, they did the back end, right? Like the Khalil Shakir, which um, I'm not sure how many people know on this podcast. I, I really liked Khalil Shakir, and he started to get activated last year. Um, but did I ever think that he's a wide receiver one? No, I thought he was a, a good two and a half option, right? Two to three option, but you need a wide receiver one. And then, like you said, now you need a wide receiver two because Gabe Davis isn't there. So when I look at the Buffalo Bills, I'm like, are they, did they, are they thinking that Josh Allen is on par with Patrick Mahomes from the perspective of, hey, we can just go draft the Rasheed Rice in the second round. And as long as we have Dalton Kincaid, who we drafted, try to funnel the offense through him potentially, right? Like kind of do a tight end centric offense. I'm not sure, right? I just, I'm, I'm of the belief there's only one Patrick Mahomes and there's only one Travis Kelsey, right? Don Kincaid, I believe he can get there, but I'm still, if I'm the Buffalo Bills, I'm looking at their draft picks, DP. So they have, a, they have the number 28 overall pick. They have the number 60 overall pick, and then they have 128 and 123, and that's the fourth round. So they don't have any third rounders. So talk about draft trades. What would I do, DP? I'm going wide receiver in the first round, and I have to be honest. I'm probably going back up, and I'm getting another wide receiver in the second round. You have two two fourth rounders. So if you can package those to get the, the, the top, you know, the – middle of the second round to get two second round picks like you already have one and then you go move up again to get another one i would do something of that nature but you have to walk out of here with the weapons because the afc east the afc as a whole right is just way too competitive and right now the the talent that stefan Diggs is it almost feels like you're not in the race anymore and we know how difficult it is to win what two years ago dp i sat here and i said that the buffalo bills had the most talented roster entering the season. Remember, they were the favorites mm -hmm. to win a Super Bowl. Yeah, they can't be the favorites anymore, right? And I always, I'm a, I'm a prime believer of if you're not getting better, you're getting worse because other teams are getting better. So, yeah, I, I think Keith. And when you look at wide receivers that should be in range for them, at uh, what did you say was the 28th pick? Eighth, yeah, 28. So, yep. Brian Thomas Jr. 
you know, your boy out of LSU, big 6'4", 210 pounder, runs 4'3", 3", maybe you can try and see if he's DK Metcalf 2.0, right? Those are similar measurements and, and athletic testing that DK had. Adonai Mitchell out of Texas, got, you know, got another guy that destroyed the testing at the combine, but there's some question marks about you got to worry about, okay, well, you know, you might not have to worry about it if he goes to Buffalo because he's going to get a, a heavy target volume because when he's was Kansas and Kansas State, when he sees 10, 11 targets, oh, he's locked in, but it's the games where they don't funnel the passing game through him where you kind of see some in and out in terms of, like, is he checking out of the game right now? Like, is he there? Right. Is he paying so attention? DP, let's do this for this for this exercise and while we're labeling off these wide receivers that's available, we, we have to put the Buffalo Bills in the context in the sense of the fact that we're talking about a team that was just AFC contenders, right? Mm -hmm. Super Bowl contenders, one of the top two, three teams in the AFC. So I, if I'm the general manager, I'm sitting there and let's say I'm the GM, head coach, whatever, right? And you're director of scouting, right? You come up to me and I'm asking, I'm like, DP, I need the three wide receivers that you feel like can help me immediately at this position. Because we talked, and the reason I'm saying this is because we talked about Brian Thomas with some development stuff. I don't know if that helps me a whole lot in 2024. Can I go to him in week 12 when we have to go to Arrowhead? And I don't know the schedule. I'm making this up, guys. Week 12, <laughs> when we have to go to Arrowhead. Or if it's week 13, when we're down in Miami, right? And it's the last drive. And I need a wide receiver to be on par with Josh Allen for us to go win that football game and divisional game. So what wide receivers, not only that you feel like talented, but you feel like are plug and play guys for the Buffalo Bills? Ooh, when you put it under those parameters, Keith, it changes I, things a little bit. Yeah, because, um, I mean, it's, it's necessary, right? Like, yeah, don't you, yeah. you think no, about no, it no, like it's, it's necessary? I, I, I appreciate the context because it is necessary. So when I think about it under those parameters, I think, and, and some people are not going to like this. I think of Keon Coleman out of Florida State. Mm -hmm. I think of Xavier Leggett out of South Carolina, yep. right? Guys that you don't have to question, A, the work, the, the, what they're going to give you snap to snap, right? Like the effort, no, you have to have none of those questions. But for me, like I, both of those guys are absolute dogs. And I think about what Josh Allen's going to want to do. And he's going to want somebody that's going to go out there, not just win matchups, but give them everything they have. The same way he puts it all on the line. Can you do the same thing? And those guys would, you know, they're different style receivers completely from a Stephon Diggs. He's the elite route runner. He's the guy who almost, I feel like he made the diamond uh, slant, diamond cut slant, such a popular route now for wide mm -hmm. receivers, right? Like he has so many different <laughs> variations of routes. That's just like highlight reel type stuff. So you're probably, you're not getting that type of guy at pick 28. You know what I mean? You're not that type of dude that's just going to be able to win one-on-one -on -one against the Stephon Gilmores and you don't blank an eye. The guy's going to be able to win one-on-one -on -one against Jalen Ramsey and you don't fear it or you don't question it, right? But I think with, with Xavier Leggett, I think with Keon Coleman, what they're going to be able to bring is that catch radius. Like, we know for a fact that Josh Allen wants to push the ball down the field. Some people are like, well, what do you say Keon Coleman for? He's a 4-6 or six guy. Guys, I don't care about the, the 40 time. At the end of the day, when you talk about running vertically at the same time, not just a go route, but he can run the post, he can run the comebacks, he can run the curl routes, but it's the back shoulder fades for Josh Allen to trust that he's going to go up and make the plays. The same way Jordan Travis will look down there like, man, Keon Coleman's down there somewhere, and he'll get the ball to him. That He's the type of receiver that you just trust that's going to come down with the play. And I think about those two guys, and I don't want to go – yeah, you can say Lab McConkie, but I'm not giving Josh Allen another small receiver. I can't – you know the slogan, we build it like a basketball team. I can't win with five Steph Currys or five Chris Pauls. I need a power forward and a, a, a wing and stuff. So, Keith, I think about at, at pick 28, for me, it's Keon Coleman. If you're talking about in that parameter, Keon Coleman or Xavier Leggett. Now, if they wanted to go in second round, I think about a Jalen Polk out of Washington, Keith, a guy that can – I think he can step in with one of those guys and be a very strong complement. And then you say, okay, we got Dalton Kincaid. We still have Dawson Knox. Do we run with um with, with Khalil Shakir in the slot? And I'm just trusting Joe Brady, who you have a lot of experience with. You know what he can do as a play caller to, to design some things, get the right spacing, and put these guys in positions. Yeah, so just knowing what I know about Joe Brady, right? He's a guy that likes wide receivers that can do multiple things. You know what I'm saying? So if you're very specific in usage, 
it that and, and I agree, right? If you think about it, if it's specific in usage, it gives you a tendency which allows the defense to predict what you're going to do and then right. stop it, right? So I, I agree with it, right? It's, it's a very simple ideology, right? You want guys that can do a lot, so it's unpredictable. Um, so a DP, you you handled the first round, right? Like that back end of that first round, early second round. What I'm gonna do is I talked about the two fourth rounders, right? We're trying to package that up to get to the top of the third, bottom of the second, or something like that. I'm gonna just name off a couple names that I think with these guys, athletic testing was there something special and spectacular? No, but I just think that they're ready-made football players um and understand the game at, at, a, at a high enough level to be able to help a team that wants to make a AFC championship Super Bowl run. And I'm gonna start with I'm gonna start with Ricky Pearsall. That's one wide receiver, right, from Florida. I really like him. Nuanced guy, understands, can play inside, outside. The next guy I'm going to name is Brendan Rice. I'm going to go with Brendan Rice, another guy that can play outside, inside, and can do a lot of different things. So those two guys are, are, are guys that I look at, and I'm like, you know what, really good. The last guy I'm going to name off, and we've talked about him enough, is Javon Baker, right? I think if you if you move to the top of the third, um, you can get, I feel like one of those three guys should be available, right? One of those three guys should be available. So that's the three guys I'm looking for when you're talking about those, you know, they can line up on the outside, play some Z, play some slot, um, have shown us to have reliable hands, right? The release packages, right? Are detailed enough. Um, they have high IQs just to be on par with a, a with a, a josh allen like i said the buffalo bills y'all are still trying to move forward so i'm just trying to help i'm just trying to help dp i'm here to help man and we're going through they have to do this thing through the nfl draft no 100 that's all we can do is, is is find and formulate ways to help all 32 teams because guys <laughs> we are you know we're fans of all of you we're trying to help all you guys get better and that's what we're here to do to provide that top tier type of content and i love the ricky pearsall call out keith one of the better receivers in this draft, and I feel like somebody's going to get the absolute steal on day two. Yeah, and the, the good thing about those wide receivers, if I'm them, I'm extremely happy because I'm going to a high-volume passer in yes. Josh Allen, right? It's a really good spot for those wide receivers. And, and you know, and all of this stuff translates, right? It translates to fantasy and everything else. It took uh, you go, you pick these wide receivers that are productive, and then you put them in situations with – a high volume pass, and then you usually get some type of magic or some type of really good connection. But DP, let's wrap this thing up, man, with the coach them up segment. DP, where we pick the player, we tell the coaches to coach them up. You know what I'm gonna do? This is a Buffalo Bills style podcast, right? We 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 talking trying to help the Buffalo Bills. So I'm gonna pick a wide receiver for the Buffalo Bills, man. That they that the coaching staff need to select probably the back end of the draft, and then they got to go ahead and coach them up. One of the most frustrating things with buying tickets is when you don't know if the seats are good, when you can't see the views from the seats and you don't know how advantage that point and that seat point will be. But guys, Game Time is now an authorized ticket marketplace for Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets even faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to the first pitch with killer last minute deals all in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee. Game time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. Okay, so if you want to prioritize last minute deals and save up to 60% off buying last minute uh, for sports, music, comedy, theater events near you, check out the Game Time app. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Passion, drive. Patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your number one ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices that you want, 
it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your number one ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Keep your number one ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Thank y'all for making Locked On NFL Draft your first listen today and every day. Shout out for being our every day as we talk. Coach him up. Keith, a guy that I stumbled upon, HBCU kid, that I really, and I mean really liked what I saw from him from a size standpoint. Big, physical, you know, deep, solid athlete. He reminded me a lot of uh, Dewan Jones when I first saw him, and that's a Nim mm. Denkwa. Out of Howard, Keith, you know, went to the combine, measured at 6'8", uh, 353 pounds. Arm length was 35 and one eighth, man, and, and 24 reps on the bench, especially with 35, you know, 35 inch arms. This is a guy thing. You talking about coach him up. He's not a day one starter by any means right now. Right. But I think technically you get him with, you know, you think about the the Philadelphia Eagles with, with, with uh, was it Jeff Stoutland? I think is their offensive line coach. You mm -hmm. you put him into that situation where he's behind and, and 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 put context to it. Their left tackle was a rugby player. Remember that now. Like their left tackle was not a traditional American football player with pads and helmets on. He was a star in rugby, if I remember correctly. And they developed him. Now you got Lane Johnson at right tackle, and this young man kind of sit in the room. Listen to the, the knowledge, being able to develop his game from a technical standpoint, using when it comes out to his footwork, his hand uh, carriage, uh, his hand placement and punches. Because when you have that type of arm length, man, at 35 and, uh, and one eighth, man, that's an outstanding wingspan to have as a tackle where you can get to your set points and then you can box. You can jab guys and keep them out of your frame. And I just think that there's a lot of room for him to develop and grow. And if I'm a, as a scout, I'm telling my NFL coach, listen, you can get him sixth, seventh round more than likely, right? Even in this, especially in this tackle class, you can get him like sixth, seventh round. And if you get him, you draft the stash, you can probably put him on practice squad if you want, but you develop this young man because he has enough potential to be a, a, a legitimate starting court, starting, uh, I think, left or right tackle, truthfully, because again, I'll have him watch some Dewan Jones. How does Dewan Jones, he doesn't, is he the most athletic tackle, Keith? No. But how does he still win and keep those chop Robinsons if you go back to 2022 Ohio State versus Penn State? How do you keep that guy from beating you around the edge, right? Just watch that type of tape and see how he operates and how he T.J. Watt, his game against T.J. Watt, he was out there showing showcasing himself, right? So I think uh, Anim Danko, man, 6'8", 350, 355, 35 and, and, and the eighth on the arm. Man, I, I got to give this to the coach and develop this kid. Mm, yeah, I like that. I have to get into Neem Dinkwa. I remember you talking about him a couple months ago. I actually just got to the Yale offensive tackle DP, uh, Kieran Amadaje, I believe. It. Um, yeah, and I, I I like him. We have to talk about him on the podcast one day, DP. Ooh. I like him. I watched him. I like him. So I'm going to definitely get to this Howard offensive tackle DP. I said I'm here. Help the Buffalo Bills out. Bills Mafia. I'm trying to help, man. I'm going to go with two wide receivers, man, in the back end of the draft that I think will be available Um, that have some upside to them. And not talking about wide receiver ones or twos, right? But we're talking about that three, four, five, somebody to help you out, right? You know, when, when you get into those, you're playing those talented teams and just a wide receiver that could appear and, and, and do some things. So coach them up segment. I'm going to, first of all, go with our guy, DP. He's been our guy for a couple of years. And listen, if you can buy into J.J. McCarthy not doing a whole lot at Michigan, he can be a top five pick, right? Let's buy into our guy, DP, Cornelius Johnson, That's the cool. wide receiver from Michigan. Came in at 6'3", um, what, 6'3", 212 pounds. So a big body guy. But guess what? Can he run? Yes, he can. He ran a 4'4", 40-yard dash with a 1'5", 10-yard split and a 38-inch vertical jump. So you see that you know that the athletic – athleticism is there it's just i think he's a guy that we don't know the volume yet right like this is the same team that went an entire half of football without throwing the football so we don't know what his volume is going to be but if i'm the buffalo bills you're talking about and i talked about their draft picks right you talk about round five they have uh two yeah they have two two fifth round picks and they have what one two Three sixth round picks. So you can find a guy like him, right, and, and, and bring him into the building, and let's see what he has. And I'm going to tell the wide receiver coach, simply coach him up. The athleticism is there. The route running is there. The flashes are there on film. So coach him up. 
the last guy I think would be a really good locker room guy um, because he brings a, a certain level of tenacity and he, he can set the tone and you believe that he plays the game like a grown man. And that's Georgia wide receiver Marcus Rosemey, Jack Saint, right? Just a back end of a, of a wide receiver core, potentially, your, like I said, your wide receiver four, your wide receiver five gets after them in, in the run game, right? But Profiles is a pretty good athlete also, and you've seen some flashes of some things with Georgia. So both of these guys, DP, were, were in situations where – the head coach, if he can run the football every single down and win that game, he would, right? So I think there's still a whole lot to unlock with both of these players. And if you're the Buffalo Bills, man, I'm definitely highlighting, strong circling these two wide receivers as coach them up guys. A hundred percent. Like I said, you know, especially if you're able to grab a, a you know, a, a legitimate starter with that first pick in the first round, that 28th pick, right? You get a guy like that, but then getting Cornelius Johnson, who, yeah, I've been talking about it. it feels like for three years now, man. Yeah, been a minute. We, he, he's, been, he's been one of our guys for a very long time. For a long time. <laughs> he's, and, you know, 2021 was the year they still had um, K. McNamara at quarterback, and they gave him the rock, and he had over 600 yards receiving, and you saw route running, you saw his athleticism, the ball skills. You're like, man, this guy could be a legitimate second-round pick. And then you get into 2022, they had, Ro uh, they had Roman Wilson and um, – I forget the the he went to Ronnie Bell, who Ronnie went to Bell. late into late in last year's draft to the San Francisco 49ers. And they just fed, you know, Ronnie Bell. You know what I mean? The, it was just like the hey, we're gonna run the ball, we're gonna find easy, easy throws, and that's all we're gonna do. And we're just gonna do that until we get to the to the end zone, right? And in 2023, it just was a lot of the same thing. Running the ball, get the ball to Roman Wilson, maybe get the ball to the tight ends, but it wasn't a lot called. For Cornelius Johnson, I think he has uh, a higher ceiling than just a fifth, sixth round pick. But that's what you're more than likely going to be able to get him because of the fact that the, the production is not going to be there, but the talent is absolutely there. Yeah, I agree 100 percent, DP. Well, listen, man, that makes for another episode of the Locked On NFL Draft Podcast. Well, I told you this was going to be a fun show, man. So if you haven't hit the like button, hit the like button. If you haven't commented, go ahead and comment, man. Let us know your thoughts right on the Houston Texans trade, the Buffalo Bills trade. What wide receiver prospects should the Buffalo Bills go after? What should the Houston Texans do uh, sitting at what their, their first pick is in the second round? But it seems to almost be a luxury type pick, right? Because the foundation of this team is really built out. And so, man, if you, the coach him up second, if you agree or disagree, let's talk about it in the comments. Listen, man, I am Keith Sanchez. You can find me on X at The Talent Cool. That right there is my co-host, my guy, man, Damian Parson. And you can find him on X at DP underscore NFL. And like we always like to say, man, y'all come talk to us because we like to talk back. Go subscribe and follow for free on YouTube or if you listen to podcasts, get the latest episode as soon as it is available. Thank you for making Locked On NFL Draft your first listen today and every day. Shout out for being our everydayers. Listen, guys, come and join the conversation again tomorrow on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.